Hey guys, it's Leanne with Custom Crafts by Charlie. Thanks for tuning in. We're doing full in the Christmas DIYs. The weather is here in upstate New York. It's chilly. It's time for hot cocoa. The leaves are falling and it's that time of year. So let's get into these four DIYs and I'm sure you're going to enjoy them. DIY number one. It's a reversible table shelf decor. I took this scrap piece of wood I had and I used this home decor wood tint in the color walnut. I really like this color wood tint. This is a silk screen I ordered off Amazon and I thought, you know, let's do a corner of this and see how it comes out. Let's just use a little of the design. This design cream by Folk Art, I love, love, love. I got it at Michael's. It's the color Farmhouse White. Now we have some lost footage. I don't know what happened to me actually applying the paste, but this is how it came out, and I absolutely love it. I just got this stencil paper for my Cricut machine, and I have gone crazy with it. I love, love this stencil paper. And I cut out a stencil for this side with the design. And I thought it would look really, really good. You don't need to sit here and watch me pluck this out because it's time consuming. And it's like watching paint dry, to be honest. So let me speed this up here so you don't have to sit here and watch the whole thing. But it's going to say Welcome Autumn, and you'll see here in a minute, it's just really, really pretty. And I thought that would look cute, right? And I'm like, okay, let's apply. We got to put the um, transfer tape. This was trial and error, guys. This stencil paper was definitely trial and error on my behalf. I did not use the transfer tape on the first couple of tries. And I learned the hard way. You need that because when you do the stencil like this and you take out the wording or the imaging, say there's an E. Well, I plucked out the inside of the E so there was no bubble in my E and it just looked like a really fat C. So, <laughs> you know, it's trial and error. So when you have words, especially like E's or O's, there's centers to them that you need. You need to keep the center in. And that's where the transfer tape comes in handy. So right now I'm just going to center this at the top of this piece of scrap wood. And didn't that design in the corner come out cute, guys? I love it. I don't know what made me put it at an angle and do just the bottom right hand corner, but it's something new, something different. I'm like, let me try this and see how it comes out. So I just applied the transfer vinyl to the piece of wood and I'm going to take off my transfer tape and be very careful that all those centers stay in place because we need those. And what you do is you actually paint over them. And before you take your, or after you take your stencil off, you take your little weeding tool and you pluck out them centers and voila, it works like a charm. I don't know why I didn't like Google how-to videos before I ruined like all that transfer vinyl, but I'm hard-headed, I guess. Now, this transfer tape that I'm using actually came from the Dollar Tree. This transfer tape is so sticky, guys. I mean, it's probably better than the Cricut brand. I could do not. Now it's time to decide what color I want to use. I went with Celery by Waverly in chalk paint. Now, when I applied this over the stencil... I applied it very, very thick, almost like a chalk paste. 
I got in there with my brush and I just kind of like glopped it on, but I didn't even coat. You know, I smoothed it out with my brush and made sure everything was even steven because you don't want to take that off and everything's like all uneven and just looks terrible. So this is exactly what you do with this stencil vinyl. You just paint right over it. I mean, this is like the best invention since the Cricut machine, to be honest. I absolutely love this. This was a design in um, Cricut Design Space. I just Googled or put in the search bar, Welcome Autumn or something to that effect, and this popped up. I did not design this myself. It was already in there. So if you look under Phrases, this will pop up if you want to use this certain design. Here I am just applying my Waverly chalk paint over the stencil. And like I said, I put it on thick, guys. Now, I don't know if you've seen. I went once, I went twice, and I made sure I smoothed it out. Now, I'm going to set this to the side to dry, and we're going to move on with DIY number two. And this is going to be like a Christmas lean-to. I don't know what happened to the footage where I painted it black in the color ink from Waverly. And I kind of brushed over the black with the color I gave by Waverly chalk paint. And I did another stencil. So I searched Seasons Greetings in Images in Cricut Design Space. And this popped up and I thought, wow, I like that. That's why I did the long board. I actually looked for the image first. And when I seen that the image could go both vertical and horizontal, I picked this board. And it's a scrap board. And I'm going to weed it here. You guys don't want to watch this, but here it is. Isn't this adorable? It's got the reindeer with the snowflake. And the, um, what was it, holly berries. And it says, Seasons Greetings. So, Seasons is going horizontally, but Greetings is going vertically. Now, I decided against the agave. I am going to paint over everything in black. This whole piece is going to be black. The color didn't match the image. And I was not happy with the color. So that's why I went, went ahead and did that. You guys can pick whatever color you want, whatever image you want. These are just inspiration, ideas, something to do to get ready for Christmas and decorate your house. This is going to look perfect, leaned up against my front door and my entryway right as you walk in. I want to put it there so bad already, but I still have my full decor up so i can't wait to decorate for christmas guys are you guys ready i am so ready for christmas thanksgiving is my favorite holiday and christmas is my second favorite and then right after christmas is new year and right after new year is my birthday so it's like bang 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 all in a row i think that's why it's my favorite time of year and again, like I said, I'm applying my transfer tape over the stencil vinyl. And we are going to take that stencil right off the backing and apply it to our piece of wood that we painted black in ink chalk paint. Now, when you apply this um, stencil vinyl to your wood, you want to make sure it's really stuck in this no bubbles and it's nice and smooth because if you get a bubble or you don't apply it really really well you're going to get some bleeding and you don't want that but as long as it's on there and you know you went over it with your scraper and you know it's not coming up you won't get any bleeding at all all. I think that's another reason why I love making my own stencils now. I haven't had not one stencil bleed on me. I absolutely love that. I can't stress that enough. Guys, I went crazy with the colors on this one. 
This is Ocean by Waverly. It's all chalk paint by Waverly. And I'm actually only going to use this blue for the snowflake up top. But I never used this many colors on one stencil before. And this came out absolutely fabulous. I mean, I was so proud of myself. I'm like, I was showing everybody that came in the house. Guys, look at this. Look what I did. And it, just, it really came out awesome. Moving on, I'm going to do our little reindeer next. And I use the hazelnut in Waverly just for the antlers. So when I say a minute amount of paint, that's exactly what I needed. Because the antlers were so tiny. But it really makes the reindeer pop. Now I'm going to use Truffle by Waverly and Chalk Paint for the reindeer body and head. Now we're going to use the color Fern by Waverly Chalk Paint. And we're going to go ahead and paint those holly berry leaves with the fern. Because this is a true Christmas green. Now I'm going to go ahead and go in with my crimson. And I am going to paint the red berries. Red, obviously. And I'm also going to use the crimson to paint the word seasons in seasons greetings. Now I'm going to go in with my white. And I am going to paint the word greetings. And also there is like a... I don't know if it's like a little star or something right down at the bottom that I am also going to paint in white. You'll see it when I do the peel and the reveal, but I mean, it came out awesome. And here we go, guys. Look at that. Isn't that incredible? I just thought it was unbelievable the way it popped and I'm just taking the red and going around the edges just to add a little more Christmas to it so to speak back to our first DIY the one we set to the side and let dry I'm gonna go ahead and do the peel and reveal on this one and you guys can see how this one came out I was absolutely happy with all of the stencil work I did on these DIYs and I hope you guys like them as well. Don't forget to like, share, comment, 
um, don't forget to subscribe and hit all notifications in the drop-down menu by the bell. So YouTube can notify you every time I upload new content. So you can check out my DIYs and my shopping hauls. I love all of my subscribers. You guys are awesome. You rock. And if nobody's told you today, you're smart. You can do it. And you're the real MVP. I love each and every one of you. So here we go. We're going slow but sure. And I didn't want to mess anything up because I did put this on kind of heavy. And I've never put chalk paint on that heavy before on this stencil vinyl. So I wanted to make sure nothing got messed up because I really do like this piece. And I love how it came out. I don't know what made me choose the celery, but I'm happy that I did. It just, it flows. It's very cohesive. And I... I, I can't say enough. I love the way all these DIYs turned out. I really, really do. And I don't think I've done a DIY video with multiple DIYs where I loved every single one of them. I've always had a favorite. And I can't choose a favorite on this one. Maybe you guys can help me out. Leave a comment down below and let me know what DIY was your favorite today. Isn't that amazing? Look at that, guys. Come on. This is displayed in my house right now. I love it. I have it sitting right in the middle of my coffee table. Now, this is what I was talking about. You take out the little centers and the bubbles or the E's or the O's. Look at that. Yes. And just to let you guys know, when you use the paste, it is washable. It's water-soluble. So if water got on that corner, you know, the stencil would come off. So when I do stuff like this, I do seal all of my projects with Mod Podge or a clear coat spray or something to that effect. But I do seal all of my stenciled projects. Now I wasn't happy. I wanted to make this. I call them dualies. Um, dual purpose. So I went ahead and made this stencil. Sweater weather. And I just typed in winter. Under phrases. And this came up. It was in Cricut Design Space already. I did not make it. And I thought, yes, this is what we're going to put on the back. And I did not use my Waverly chalk paint for this stencil. I did use my Rust-Oleum chalk paint for this stencil. And I chose the color Coastal Blue because I absolutely love this color. I actually purchased this paint to paint a center beam in my house. And I love the way it came out. I should have picked a brighter color on this dark tint wood stain because I just, I, I, I mean, I love it. Don't get me wrong. But you see how it's kind of like almost hard to see? And here I am sealing it. And sealing it again to make sure, you know, nothing happens to it. And guys, guess what I decided to do? I decided to turn this piece of scrap wood into a pumpkin. Yes, I did. <laughs> so here I am with my little birch twigs, logs, whatever you want to call them. I got them at the Dollar Tree. And I'm trying to find a peduncle. I'm trying to be politically correct here. A pumpkin stem. I am trying to find a peduncle that looks right with the wood stain and the stencil colors. And I actually went, uh, went I think I went dark with the stem. I'm pretty sure I did a dark stem. And I don't know what possessed me to turn this into a pumpkin but i thought it needed more at the top and i didn't want to do a bow so yeah i went with the dark the dark stem here 
And I was just having fun with it. And I needed this time in my craft room. Life has been so crazy. And you wouldn't believe the things. I mean, I'm just getting hit left and right from sick children all the time because they're bringing home this virus and that virus from school since school started. And, you know, then I I have a couple of medical issues I'm going through. And I'm in the middle of having, like, reconstructive surgery on my mouth. And so that's why I was away for a while, guys. And, you know, I had such a long hiatus in between DIYs and shopping hauls. I, I'm going through some stuff. So if you notice I'm talking a little bit funny... It is because I'm in the middle of having several surgeries on my mouth. So that's what's going on with me. And, you know, of course, the kids, they keep me on my toes. And, you know, the full-time job, 9 to 5. So life has been hectic. And right here, I'm just um, putting a little Spanish moss around my peduncle. <laughs> I think that word is so funny. And I got these, like, little wood um, leaves from Hobby Lobby. They were $4.99 for the pack. I think I got them 50% off because I don't think I would pay $5 for that pack of leaves. But <laughs> um, I wanted to go with the rust orange color leaf. And I wanted to do that because I wanted it to be seen. I wanted the leaf to be seen. So, that was my first attempt at applying this leaf. But, you will see what happens to me here in a second. Now, I like the look of the little maple leaf. Don't get me wrong. But, it's a natural wood color. And, I feel like it didn't give me that extra mm that I needed. Like, the wow factor. Like, hey, look at me. I'm a leaf on a peduncle. <laughs> so, I went ahead with the rust orange. And, oh. I'm sorry, I missed it. Well, it wound up crumbling in my hands. So, I went with the maple leaf after all. Here we are, DIY 3 and 4. Now, I seen these in Hobby Lobby. And they were... It was a small one. And they wanted five forty nine, And the Christmas stuff was not on sale that week. And this small one literally measures, I think, 3 inches. I'm going to go ahead and show you right here. Yep, three inches. And they wanted almost six bucks for this riser. And honestly, what can you put on it? A candle, you know? And I went ahead and I bought a bigger one, which measures five inches. Now, Hobby Lobby had theirs flipped upside down. These are 20 millimeter beads, before I forget, for the larger one. And I got 16 millimeter beads for the smaller one. Hobby Lobby had theirs flipped upside down with the beveled edge of the riser facing down. I get why they did that. So I chose crimson and I chose I chose crimson for the smaller one and white for the larger one. They did the bevel edge down because it would give them more surface space on top, you know, upside down. I wasn't concerned with the surface space. I wanted people to see that beveled edge. I didn't want to have them have to look under, you know, my riser to see that beveled edge. So I flipped it around. And that's what I like. That's what I did. You don't have to do that. You can do the dupe exactly the way you've seen it in the store. Um, if you choose to make this. But I didn't want to do that. So I made mine with the beveled ledge facing up. Because I think it's just so pretty. And I'm doing the same colors i seen in Hobby Lobby. Only they were all small. And I just did a smaller one and a larger one. I did a larger one in white. Because white's neutral. You can use that all year round. Red, not so much. I mean, you might be able to get Christmas and Valentine's Day out of it, um, depending on what the decor looks like in your home. If you have a lot of red, then you can use it all year round. I don't have a lot of red. 
So I painted them. I dried them with my heat gun. And I stuck my beads on a skewer. I painted those, dried them. And now I'm going to distress them. Because that's exactly how I seen them in Hobby Lobby. And I am taking my 120 grit sandpaper on my zip sander here and i am going to distress these bad boys and these came out absolutely awesome i told you guys i'm happy with every single diy in this video and i hope you guys are as well now i'm just gonna take a little hot glue and i'm gonna glue these beads to the bottom and this is what's gonna hold up our riser Don't forget to hit that subscribe button down below if you're not already subscribed to my channel. Those of you who are, welcome back and thank you for continuing to support me. I can't stress that enough. Like every time you come and click on my video, that helps me so much. You have no idea, especially um, going through what I'm going through. I look forward to reading your comments and the positive comments you guys leave for me and the feedback you guys leave for me it means the world to me you have no idea so don't forget to comment and let me know you are here and you watch this video and let me know your thoughts let me know about your day um i like to get one-on-one -on -one with my subscribers i am that type of person i'm a people person and my village can never be too big. So thank you for returning. And all of you who are here for the first time, please hit the subscribe button. And I guarantee you won't be disappointed. Now, guys, what do you think? Do you think I distressed it enough? I mean, wait till you guys see the pictures at the end. The way I styled them and how they look. Now we're going to go ahead and distress the red one. And we're going to knock these out. Now they are done. Look at these guys. Aren't they the cutest? And I was thinking about doing sets of these. Maybe one a little bit larger. And selling them at my craft shows. Uh, maybe like a set of three for 20 bucks or something. I mean, they're getting $6 for the tiny one in Hobby Lobby. How ridiculous is that? Yeah, I might pay half price when they're on sale, but $6 for a three-inch riser. And we made it for a dollar plus paint and beads, you know? So it just goes to show you the rising cost on everything. And they came out awesome. Look at these guys. I got these bottles with the lights inside at the Dollar Tree. I got that cup from Dollar General. And here's our pumpkin. How cool is that? From a piece of scrap wood to a reversible um, table decor. And there's that sign I am so proud of. That's it for me tonight, guys. Don't forget to subscribe, like, comment, share. Hit all notifications in the drop-down menu by the bell. All my links are in the description box below. Until the next one.